And here with more reaction is former CIA station chief, Fox News contributor Dan Hopp, and Florida Congressman Michael Waltz. Um, uh, Congressman, let me start with you, because my sources in the intel community, you know very well, uh, are all telling me that something is off, something is different. Uh, I was even told that it is well believed that Vladimir Putin, he looks puffed up, maybe on some steroid or some kind of medication of some kind, that he has become more paranoid, more isolated. Uh, others have told me that he's had, you know, s separate incidents of face uh, lifts, whatever he's done to his face, facial work. I don't know what to think about it. Um, I've always thought of him as a hostile actor in a hostile regime and somebody you can never trust. Yes, yeah, Sean, we, we've received a, a series of briefings. I can't get into details, but I could tell you a couple of things. One, they, can you tell they me don't if know I'm over the sure target. Is, is this the kind of thing? Yeah, you're hearing? They, well, they don't know for sure Putin's state of mind. Uh, you know, there was reassuring in terms of his nuclear posture uh, where uh, you know, just just be reassure, reassured there. What I fear uh, is that this is about to get a lot worse uh, before it gets better. Uh, clearly, he is frustrated uh, uh, with his generals that this quick lightning decapitation strategy uh, hasn't worked to take out Zelensky and put in his own puppet government. That means, and this is part of Soviet Russian doctrine, they are going to go to a scorched earth strategy, bombing civilians, shelling cities, inflicting mass casualties. They did it in Afghanistan in the 80s, Chechnya in the 90s, Syria in the last 10 years. And we're starting to see them move in that de next di next direction now. You know, Dan, you look at tanks, you look at fighter jets. Uh, the Ukrainians, they are outmanned, they are outgunned. And this is a very, very aggressive military action by Putin. Uh, I admire the Ukrainian people for fighting back, but I agree with the congressman. I fear the worst is yet to come. Sean, what strikes me, if you're looking for a silver lining in all of these dark clouds, just look at President Zelensky. You know, I've always felt that uh, leaders aren't necessarily born. They're made. They're made in a crisis. And we're seeing President Zelensky emerge as, as a 21st century leader uh, facing Vladimir Putin and Russia's brutal aggression. He's mobilized the international community. Just days ago, uh, it was Ukraine who wanted to join NATO. Now it's NATO that is joining Ukraine. Switzerland has given up its neutral status to join in the European Union sanctions. All of this uh, because of President Zelensky's appeal to, uh, the, to, the, to the cause of fighting for democracy and freedom and liberty. Everything that's enshrined in our Constitution and the Bill of Rights. And so he's mobilized the international community behind Ukraine, and the Ukrainian citizens are fighting uh, with everything they've got. And, and for me, that's, that's the silver lining in this story right here. He's jolted uh, the, the democracies, which were kind of in a slumber for a little while there. And uh, that's at least something positive we can derive right now as we wait, I agree with you, for darker days to come. Congressman, I know that Donald it's Trump not. thankfully gave the Ukrainians the Javelin anti-tank missiles, even at a time when right. we thought corruption was rampant in Ukraine. Um, but now we have the European Union. Why they did not do this in the lead up to this invasion, I don't know. But finally, Germany, a thousand anti-tank weapons. We're yep. providing Stinger missiles, fighter jets. They're providing Stinger missiles, anti-tank weapons. The UK, Poland, France, Belgium, Sweden, Denmark, uh, the Czech Republic, uh, Slovakia, the Netherlands, uh, Greece, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Portugal, Canada, Finland. Now, that will give them at least some ability to fight back, which they desperately need. Would that be enough? Well, Sean, that's the other silver lining is, is these European nations got a kick in the pants. Uh, Putin scared the snot out of them, and it's a real wake-up call. Look at the reversals from Germany on Nord Stream moving back to nuclear. And the biggest piece, as you mentioned, is providing lethal aid now after they blocked it just a few weeks ago. But the question is, can it get overland through Poland, through Romania, since we can't fly it in anymore, uh, and, and get in the hands of these Ukrainian resistance fighters? Sean, I think if the Russians get bogged down in these urban areas, tanks are most vulnerable from the top. 
uh, which you can shoot down on them from buildings from the rear. You can use sewage systems, basements, subway systems to pop up from behind and then to choke off these long logistics convoys. One of the stories that may come out of this is that the Russian army is a bit of a paper tiger in terms of its actual conventional capabilities. It's a conscription army, all draft, very young, treated brutally with old equipment. And for Putin to continue to sustain, fuel, and maintain an army that big to occupy a nation of 40 million people bogged down in urban warfare, if Europe and the United States would step up and get them the arms they need fast enough, they may, they may have a fighting chance. You know, Dan uh, Hoffman, you were CIA station chief. You spent many a year studying Vladimir Putin and Russia. Uh, you probably know him as well as anybody that I would ever interview. Uh, his propaganda chief is out there threatening the West with 500 nuclear weapons. Do you think he's capable of that or is that a lie? So I think he took his uh, nuclear readiness to that elevated status uh, because he's very nervous about the West providing humanitarian and military assistance, which is going to keep Ukraine in the fight. Time is on the side of the Ukrainians, and Vladimir Putin knows that, and I think that's why he was threatening us and reminding us that he has those nuclear weapons. And uh, uh, do, do we need to know, remind him that we have? Uh, do we need to remind him that we have our own, and other countries do as well? Did he forget that part? Yeah, well, yeah, and that's, that's something that President Biden ought to be thinking about for tomorrow night's State of the Union. I, I would suggest that it would be of great value if he were speaking to Vladimir Putin himself, to the Russian military, as you very, very eloquently uh, said earlier in, in the program, uh, that, you know, the Russian military ought to be thinking twice about inflicting uh, this, this harm, uh, killing innocent civilians as they are. President Biden should address them. The mission for the United States-led NATO alliance is really clear. It's provide Ukraine with, with lethal and humanitarian assistance and avoid a, a war, a direct war, with Russia. That's it. And that's going to require some diplomacy and some very direct talk from President Biden tomorrow night. Well, I'd like to think that there are, are people around Vladimir Putin that are not as soulless as he is uh, and might see this aggression and the killing of men, women and children, innocent men, women and children and the invasion of a, a sovereign country uh, as a reason to say, I'm not going to go along with that and maybe take care of business and make the world a safer place. Dan Hoffman, thank you. Congressman Waltz, thank you.